Alexander, thanks for coming along. Um, first session, we spoke a bit about contracts before. What is it you want to work on today? I'd really like some advice or some guidance on one of the main issues I'm having at the moment, which is revenue streams. Okay. You okay if I just take a few notes there on yeah, that? Absolutely. Right. What in particular is it that you want to look at vis a vis revenue streams? Um, I have a few ideas, but I'm just not sure if. There, I just need some kind of validation on those, and maybe you have some further ideas on where I can take what I've already kind of recommended. Uh, that would be great. Okay, so uh, you, you've got some ideas that you've worked on in terms of revenue streams at the moment. Yeah. And for me as a coach, you're looking to see if they're valid, right? <laughs> if yeah. they stand up. Yeah, definitely. Um, or maybe there's a better idea. Okay, so it. that links into some recommendations mm -hmm. then as well, if there's any that I can think of. And also, if there's a few ideas coming from me that, that might help too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. A new perspective would be great. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, let's let's see what we can do with that then. Right, Sandra. The bit that you wanted to actually work on was revenue streams. Okay. Mm -hmm. And looking at getting a few ideas, hearing what you've got already, this kind of stuff. The model that I'm actually going to use here, as far as coaching is concerned, is described on one of these little plastic cards, and it's this one here. It's called the 3D model. And basically what we're going to do is diagnose what's going on with yourself and the revenue streams at the moment. So that's the bit where you're going to sort of reveal all, as it were. Then what we've got is, the, th the second D is the design. So we're going to design uh, a business, uh, sorry, a revenue stream for you that basically is fit for purpose, i.e. it's going to get the money in. It's going to fill the till, right? That sounds appealing, doesn't it? And then what we're going to do here is, this, the third D is do. That's the bit where you need to go and do it. That's the implementation. So that's the easy bit for me, the difficult <laughs> bit for you. Comfortable with that? Yeah, that okay. sounds good. I'll leave that there just so you can see how we actually work through it. But if you give me the background then, tell me what it is that you've got with your ideas around revenue streams at the moment. Okay, so I have a startup business. Okay. And okay, the moment, I can just scribble some notes here. Yeah, absolutely. At the moment, um, I'm kind of getting to the end of what, what the, the funds I had available, which okay. I put aside. So I need to make some decisions on how I deal with the next, say, six to nine months. Do I go back to work full time? Do I kind of find something where I can just get some cash coming in to pay rent? Um, I've got a few kind of scenarios in mind, but it's it's just what is going to work best with my current situation so that I can keep growing my startup. Okay, so you, keeping the startup going and growing it and building it yeah. is your primary objective. Absolutely. Right, okay. So and that's, paying that's my rent. <laughs> and pay, paying the rent, okay, then kidding with that as well. Um, and you said that, you know, there's a full-time job, you could go and get one of those, or you could actually do some other things to get cash in. Is there any other things that you're looking yeah. at? Yeah, I mean, I could contract, which would be more ideal. I don't really want to go and get a full-time job if I can't commit to it fully. Right. I think that's unfair, but... The contracting thing is, is a possibility. Um, so, yeah, at the moment that's the main one that seems to be the most obvious one. Right, okay. So, I mean, the cash in is the goal, really, isn't it, in terms mm. of this? But um, the full time job or the contracting are the two options that you've really got, right? Anything else that you've thought of or? Um, not really. I have thought getting something that's really just a simple job that I can work part-time, but it won't be paying as high. But at least then it's not something that I'm kind of overburdened with. Right. And okay. then I can still have the energy to work on my startup. So I mean, that's a factor as well, having the same amount of energy that I can put back into my own work. Right, okay. So we've got three things on the table then. We've got full-time job, we've got contracting, or we've got a simple job part-time. Mm. Okay. Anybody that you know, friends, family, or whatever else, that's doing things that generate income or revenue that you haven't really thought about. Well, actually, I could do that for the next sort of four or five months. Anything like that spring to mind? No, unfortunately. <laughs> right. So they're all in sort of pretty run-of-the-mill kind of yeah. approaches as far as employment's concerned and income generation. Absolutely, yeah. Right. Very okay. mainstream. <laughs> right. Which one do you want to look at first then? Full-time job, contracting or... Um, I think the contracting one is the one that seems the most logical at okay. the moment. So if you do that and you get, because that's the, what I'm hearing and seeing here is that that's the one that you favour. Only that it's, it's more instant. I mean, okay. I did have a, an idea 
I just don't think it's, um, I, don't, I mean, I should probably tell you anyway, uh, the revenue stream in okay. terms of like another business. But, but the problem with that is that it takes a long time to build up. Right. So, so this is you doing thing, another business? Yeah, but a smaller one on the side so that when I come, come out of contracting or full-time work, I've got something that's income generating right. that will work alongside my startup, which, okay. will, which will take a lot longer. Probably. Right. Okay. What I was thinking was that if you look at the startup one first and you work that through and come to a conclusion, mm. would you then even, please take this in the right way, but would you then actually be bothered to look at the issue of a, of a full-time job or a simple part-time job because you've got the result that you want to? Uh, if I had the money to keep going on that, then that would be ideal. But yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's the problem. <laughs> right. So in terms of, of just our, our, remember we're in this diagnosed stage at yeah. the moment, just talking about it. That just going back to that, if if you go and look at the contracting and you're quite happy with what comes out of that conversation, would you want to even have a conversation about the full time job and the simple part time job, or because you're happy with what you've got in contracting, would you say no, I'm comfortable with this, I don't want to look at those two? Do you, do you see what I mean? Yeah, I think some. I think they're all options, but just in terms of like what is going to work best, the contracting is going to pay quicker. And right. It's using a skill set I already currently have. Um, okay. I my main concern is that I'm going to try and do too much. Right. Okay. So, yeah, sometimes I'm I'm not sure am I doing too much or. Right. Is it okay for me? Okay. Let's have a quick look at this contracting side of things then, and then what we can possibly do is to move into the design stage if it suits. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we can we can have this session around about the contracting. If you want to have a look at the other sessions later on, we can do that in another session. So that's fine. So with the contracting, tell me a bit about that. Okay, so if I go through agencies, I tend to get paid quicker, which okay. is ideal. Um, working in advertising, uh, if I go, if I use my own clients, it's it will pay better, but I won't get paid as much as, as quick, quickly, right. which is a problem at the moment because you need cash flow. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm thinking about kind of becoming a little bit more established with some of the agencies okay. in order to have something that's a bit more ongoing. Maybe a, a longer term contract would be more ideal right. rather than short term ones, which I have previously been looking at. Okay. So that's what you want to do is make sure A, you're not doing too much mm. and B, ultimately move towards a longer term contract if you're working with agencies. Yeah. Right. At least then I know that there's revenue coming in. Okay. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Okay. Um, in terms of, are you already with some agencies or one agency or? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've been with them previously, so it's it's not difficult for me to go back into that. Right, you've got a good track record, yeah. well established. No problem. When you were with the agency, were you with the agency as Sandra or were you with uh, the agency as the company name? Um, well, it's kind of both because you go in as yourself. Right. And you go in on site. Okay. So, but under my company, my limited company, then. That's the startup company. No, this is just my contracting company. All oh, right. Okay. So <laughs> the startup company is different to the contracting company. Very different. Company. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, I'm wondering whether the the startup company could actually use your contracting as an income stream. That way, you could start to build the company. Oh. Okay. <laughs> do, do you know what I mean by that? Um, maybe explain that a bit more. Yeah. Well, you've got a startup company, which mm. we'll say is Company A. Okay. And currently, what you've got is a track record, etc., with an agency, uh, which you've been doing a little bit of Sandra and a little bit as Company B. Mm. Now, if the income from the agency was actually paid into Company A, you'd actually start to build up the reserves in Company A. Um, you know, you'd start okay. to build up transactions with the bank, obviously. So you'd start to build up a banking record and everything else. And you'd also see the company grow financially in terms of having that money in the yeah. Would it matter the if, they, if it wasn't similar though? No, it doesn't need to matter at all, does it? I mean, if you're thinking, um, if you think about some companies, I mean, this big scale now, but Virgin started off in the, in the record business, right? Mm. And in the Virgin group, you now have okay, Virgin Media. Do you see what I mean? Products, yeah. yeah, so you end up with your startup becomes a bit of a portfolio company. Right. Right? Okay. And then it may be that you know you can then actually add more to it or take it away or whatever else, but it starts to get the startup company established. You know, you start yeah. to get income into it, 
you know, the other thing is, is if your agency work is down, you can actually still do some more in the startup side of things in company A. So the activity levels around company A is going. I think probably one of the, the psychological benefits of that would be that you feel as though you're still building your startup. Mm, it's my main concern is yeah. that I don't want to stop working on it, but it's just, that's how it is. Yeah. You, know, you can't keep going without funds. Okay.